Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and in yesterday's video, I asked you guys how I should remove this stump. I've got a stump grinder. I could cut it off low and grind it out. I've got a backhoe and a skid steer, and I could dig and then pull it out. But everyone's answer is that I should burn it out. So, that's what I'm going to do today. I've got some setup time that's going to go into that. I want to use a little bit of diesel to soak into the stump. I'm going to drill some holes and my diesel transfer tank's empty so I've got to go refill that. I'm not going to burn it from three foot high. I'm going to cut two 16 inch slabs off of it. Then I need to round up some material to burn on top of it and I've got sources for that already figured out. So there's going to be some setup time and I'm also I'm going to dig down around it because I want it to burn almost from underneath. So it's going to be an all-day process but hopefully this sucker is gone by the end of the day and the end of the video. So let's get started. This stump is just tall enough that I can cut 16 inches off of it twice and get a little bit of extra firewood out of it. The first section I cut all the way through because my bar would reach and because I have clearance. Now if you watch right here, I cut about 95% of the way to the end and then stop. I do that so that this big chunk of wood doesn't sit down on my bar. <laughs> Now I'm grabbing a couple of wedges to put in for the same purpose, just to keep the weight of this chunk of wood off the bar. Then I cut all the way through on the back side, and with the way the wedges are placed right now, all the weight from this chunk of wood is going to set back instead of setting down on my saw. <laughs> Now as you see me scratching at the base of the stump with the skid loader, I'm trying to drag rocks out because this entire area has rocks protruding up out of the ground but just a couple of inches. And I didn't realize at this point how big those rocks actually were. The reason I'm cutting this the way I am is cutting a stump this diameter right at ground level is difficult. My saw has a three quarter wrap handle that prevents me from getting the bar as low as I'd like to. And a lot of times what happens is I start around the stump in one direction, get halfway around and realize that my handle is going to interfere with a protruding root or just a rising ground level and it makes it awkward. So a lot of times I will cut it into four sections and that just makes it a lot easier to get this cut down low and it means that it's not critical that I cut each side at exactly the same height. <laughs> I have done tons of videos removing stumps. A lot of them probably 20 times with the stump grinder, if not more than that. But I've also dug out at least three with the backhoe on the tractor, and I've dug them out with a mini excavator, I've used a stump bucket, and no matter how I do it, everybody tells me I'm doing it wrong. And a lot of the time, when I dig a stump out, People tell me I should have burned it. Well, as you're going to see today, burning out a stump isn't necessarily quick and easy either. In this case, 
I had to cut off all this top part, which is a little bit time consuming. And as you go along, we'll see the other challenges. But one big thing is it just takes longer than you might think to burn out a stump. I've seen people, for instance, when I was a kid, my dad used to burn out stumps. And he would burn on it for an entire weekend and not get it and come back to it and burn it again the next weekend. And that's all just more time. There's basically only one quick and easy way to remove a stump. And that is to have a really good size excavator and just dig it out. But I'm not renting a machine every time I need to remove a stump. And I hit a clump of dirt. Now the chain's too dull, it won't cut. I'm gonna have to go sharpen a chain. I don't know if it's going to work, but my goal here is to get the fire to burn under the main part of the stump and actually do a better job. I've been planning all day to do that with the backhoe, but it's hot as heck out here. I don't really feel like putting the backhoe on and doing it that way, so I'm just going to see what the tree puller will do digging under those roots. If it's not working, I may still put the backhoe on, but we'll just see what happens. This tree puller is basically a stump bucket only better. When you combine the narrow point on it with the cutting teeth and the power of a skid loader, you can really wreak some havoc. The only thing is, compared to doing this with a tractor backhoe, is I'm not removing the material, I'm just busting it up. So in the center of this is a massive stump and I used this precision manufacturing tree puller to just rip up everything around it like an eight foot circle in about three minutes. So 
The question is how big of a tree can it pull? Big as you want because it'll rip the entire area up. Big as you as you can push over. So now the question is can I get all this material out of here and start my fire? I've got one more step. Get this material out, then I'm gonna drill into the stump. Usually once on every project, there's a point where I feel like I'm an idiot and I didn't go about this the right way. And today, that was trying to pull this loose material out. And I really fought with it because there's still roots in here that I couldn't break with the tree puller. And I wouldn't have been able to break these larger roots with the tractor backhoe either. I mean, eventually, either of them would break it. But with a reasonable amount of effort, some of these roots were just too big. So those roots are stopping me from getting down in there. And it was hard to back drag them out. And I couldn't really get down in there because it's hard to see, but it's actually a fairly deep hole. And it was just awkward. And it felt like this whole plan wasn't going to work but it ended up being pretty good. The next thing I'm expecting people to leave in the comments is that if I'm going to all this trouble, I should have just dug it out. Well, judging by the roots I can see, this would be a really tough stump to dig out. It's bigger than the one we dug out with the mini excavator, and we kind of fought to get that one out. So with the equipment I had, it definitely would have taken the entire day to get this out. I figure you're going to have a hole that's 8 foot out in each direction, so 16, 18 foot diameter hole that's 6 foot deep, and it's going to be a fight to break a lot of the roots, and then even after doing that, it's going to be a fight to get the stump out. A lot of times, something looks easy from a distance, but when you go to do it, it's a little harder. This was the moment where I went from disappointment to feeling pretty good about it. Because while I was digging, I really couldn't tell if I was making much progress at uncovering the base of the stump. I am, I don't know, 18 inches below ground level right here. You can see the size of roots coming out of this. I've done nothing to dig this out. Of all the digging it would take to dig this out, I've done 10%. But well, what I have done is I've allowed a fire to really burn this. Now, time to get out the drill. I've got a one inch paddle bit. Never actually used one of these on a stump like this, so we'll see how it does. Even though I said diesel, I end up actually pouring oil down into the groove that I'm cutting right now, 
just to try to get the fire to penetrate this stump. Another benefit to digging this out the way I did is that I can actually burn these pallets with less concern about nails from the pallets being left behind because once I'm done burning, I'll just cover over all this with the skid loader with dirt and not have to worry about getting any punctured tires or anything like that. I really wasn't sure if I wanted to use the sawdust in the fire or not because sawdust, if you dump it on a fire, it's explosive. But if you try to light a pile of sawdust, it actually doesn't light very well because it's dense and there's no way for air to pass through it. So everything that you see in this pile, I have more of in large quantities. Stacks of pallets. I've got a lot more of these telephone poles or electric poles. Got more bulk wood that's no good, and I've got a lot of sawdust. So we can build this however we need to. Right now, I cut all those holes in the top of the stump. I'm going to pour some diesel down in those. Then I'm going to light some cardboard and put on it. Here we go. This fire really took off. The way I layered the pallet wood, the fact everything's dry, it just got really hot almost immediately and stayed that way all day. Those larger round poles that you see me putting on there aren't from a tree. Well, I guess originally they are, but those came from light poles that fell on a baseball field when we had a storm and I was kind of sent in for storm damage cleanup. And that's been six months ago, and all that time I've had this big stack of poles in the way, so I'm glad to finally be rid of them. Then the loose material you see is from a tree I cut down actually last fall, and it's been sitting up there. I got all the firewood out of it, but I didn't clean up the branches. So... This gave me an excuse to get that mess cleaned up as well.
I just went inside for oh, 45 minutes. It's still burning so hot I can't get within 20 feet of it. But I want to keep piling it up. See what time it is. 6.45. So I'm going to do a few more hours of this and we'll see how it turns out. This clip right here was recorded around 7.30 p.m. And as I edit this video, it's a little after midnight. And I just went out and checked the fire. And I would say it's burning almost as hot now as it was when I recorded this. All right, so you can see the tractor in the background and get kind of a size reference for the, how big that fire is. And it's been burning this hot for six hours now. And I'm gonna keep it going. And probably tomorrow's video, but if not, the next day, I'll come out here and show you this that I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna be able to cover over this and, and it's gone, so. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.